Okay, today we're going to start our unit on logic and critical thinking. So I wanted to start with the most basic terms, and we're going to get into some more details in our next video. But let's start with rational, non-rational, and irrational. There's some nuance here. So a lot of times people think of uh, rational and irrational, and they're confusing uh, non-rational and irrational. So I want to sort those things out uh, before we move any further. Okay, so let's start with what a rational claim is. A rational claim is any claim that's made in accordance with logic and reasoning. And that's what we're going to learn how to do uh, better. You probably already know how to do this somewhat. But we're going to make claims, and then we're going to turn those claims into arguments that are going to follow the rules of logic. They are going to be in accordance with reason. So some examples that we will talk about uh, will be deductive arguments, the most famous of which are syllogisms, valid syllogisms, working functional syllogisms. They follow all the rules. Evidence-based arguments, uh, inductive arguments, arguments that are based on uh, evidence repeated over and over and over again, uh, and consistent thinking, right, that, that we don't... Uh, <clears throat> change our reasons without good reason for changing our reasons. So this is the kind of rational thinking that we want to be doing. I'll give you the most classic example of a valid deductive argument, a valid syllogism. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is more mortal. This is considered to be a very rational argument. That first claim, all men are mortal, uh, is rooted in our common belief that uh, everybody we have seen has died. Uh, and Socrates is a man was rooted in our belief that Socrates met the definition as a man. And then the way that those two terms are connected, if Socrates is a man and if all men are truly mortal, uh, we don't have to witness Socrates dying to deduce from that argument that Socrates too is mortal, right? So that's an example of uh, what we would consider to be good reasoning. It's based on, uh, some of the claims are based on evidence experience, and then the claims are connected in such a way, uh, they're almost connected mathematically, that if one is true, the other has to be true, right? So this is considered good rational thinking. It may or may not be true, but it is a good rational argument. All right, that leads us to our next term, which is non-rational. I think people want to jump right away to irrational, but a lot of times when we're talking to people, they're making what we call non-rational claims. And so these are claims that are justified, if at all, uh, through an appeal to something other than reason. So sometimes people don't try to justify non-rational claims, and sometimes they will by appealing to something other than reason. And we just need to be clear that we're talking about a non-rational claim if we're making a non-rational claim, right? It's going to be different than an irrational claim, which we'll get to in just a second. So sometimes people are making appeals to authority. I'm just going to do what he says because he's the police officer. Um, a feeling or intuition, maybe a religious experience or intuition, a mystical experience, something that... Um, they're not making, they're not intending to make a rational argument to support their claim. They're appealing to something that is non-rational. Okay. So an example, I'm going to stay away from that guy because he gives me the creeps. I've got this intuition. I just got a bad feeling about this, right? You may or may not be correct, but we are, what you are not doing is appealing to reason, right? Again, right now we're not concerned about whether these arguments are true or not. We're just labeling them as rational, non-rational. And then lastly, we're going to talk about irrational. Okay. So an irrational claim is one that is contrary to reason. There's two basic types of uh, irrational claims. One is one that just flies in the face of all of our experiences. Um, for example, there's unicorns in the parking lot, right? We've never heard of anybody uh, in our lifetime or in recorded history really seeing a unicorn. So it's really suspect that there would be uh, unicorns in the parking lot right now. Right, so it flies in the face of all of our experiences. It could be true, right? It could not be true, but it's irrational. It's an irrational claim because it's flying in the face of all of my experiences. So for good reason, I can reject it. Um, last one, those that involve a self-contradiction, right? If I told you that I had a bag full of spherical cubes, that's impossible. It can't be. It's irrational. It does not compute. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because the definition of sphere and the definition of cube are at odds. They're inherently contradictory concepts. Okay, so those are the two types of irrational claims. So let's just sum up again. So rational, according to logic, according to reason. Non-rational, justified, if at all, 
by something other than reason and logic, and irrational is contrary to logic and reason. All right, so that non-rational claim kind of fits in the middle. And what we will see, what you will see probably in discussing with your classmates and parents and friends, is a lot of, a lot of times people make non-rational claims. It's not that their claims are irrational. They're just non-rational. We, we need to be clear about that. If we are making a non-rational claim, we need to be clear that we're making a non-rational claim. Likewise, if somebody is irrational, we can then point out the inconsistencies in the reasoning. That's going to be our goal, that we can identify the irrational claims and say, this is what's wrong with the claim that you're making. This is where you have gone astray, right? And we do that by learning how to make good rational claims, okay? So make sure you got a handle on those three terms, rational, non-rational, and irrational. We're going to talk a lot more about how to uh, respond to all three types of claims. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you.